hello, uh, my name is Peter Ingram. Um, I was um, uh, one of the people who started the venue campaign um, in 1984, uh, along with my um, colleague Jay Taylor. We uh, started up a thing called the Cambridge Music Trust in uh, say 1984, which was basically to promote the idea of um, uh, uh, encouraging people to uh, participate in a, uh, a New Junction project. Um, and one of the ways we did that was to create um, uh, an album, it was actually a cassette. Um, so we gathered uh, tapes from a, a, a studio in Cambridge, uh, Mac Studios, um, and invited the artists to give their material to uh, the promotion campaign, which they duly did. So we produced uh, a cassette originally, but this is, you can see that, Ways to Move cassette. This is now, I'll just put, put this onto CD. So we created this cassette um, and uh, released it uh, locally and um, managed to get the then uh, mayor-elect, uh, Councillor John Woodhouse, to uh, chair the Cambridge Music Trust for us and support this, this project um, on this basis. Um, and that worked well. Um, we managed to establish um, good relations with uh, the City Council through John Woodhouse um, and began talking to them. We released the uh, Ways to Move cassette um, and we started promoting it uh, in and around uh, Cambridgeshire and, and, and more widely. Um, and the general consent, we were promoting it to radio stations essentially, trying to uh, gain, gain interest uh, more widely in the region. And most of them said to us that uh, they liked the material, but uh, because it was a cassette they couldn't broadcast it. So um, we needed to produce uh, another album that was broadcastable, broadcast, broadcast quality. So we did. We went through the whole process again. We got some money from the city council to produce a vinyl album um, and went through the same process. Invited local bands to participate and so they did and we produced the Strange Fish album, um, which is an interesting cover. Um, photograph of the ripples I did myself by photographing the cam and treating it in the studio. So, um, we released the um, Strange Fish album and continued on the process. In the meantime, you're probably aware that the fakes incident occurred and things took on uh, a whole different tone and uh, a whole different momentum and things really started to move very quickly after that. Um, so, um, we um, were invited to, the, uh, after the fakes incident, the Cambridge Music Trust were invited to widen the membership in order to represent uh, the wider population of, of the city uh, rather than just the musicians um, so we did that um, and um, I seem to remember approaching uh, spending a, a, a couple of hours around at uh, Jim and Lynn's, Lynn's, Lynn's house Lynn, yeah. um, talking to them about the, the campaign and, and they subsequently got involved and joined the CBG um, and uh, the CBG continued for another, where are we, uh, five years until completion. So I remained uh, on the CBG until about 1987 uh, and then I left for various reasons um, and went on to um, uh, pursue a career or attempt to pursue a career in, in local radio, BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. Um, so that's that story. So um, it's nice to be here 30 years later. Uh, well, 36 years later, I should say, and very pleased that uh, the, the junction, the Cambridge Junction, is still uh, fully operational and still very successful and still has a wide remit for uh, artistic uh, participation. Um, I understand that um, there's now a, a, a proposal to extend the junction further and to redevelop it and with additional funding. So um, I'm hoping that the, uh, our original intention, which was to uh, encourage local musicians to um, be able to rehearse, to be able to record, to be able to make videos, um, that, didn't, that didn't happen at the time. And so I'm hoping that in the future that will happen um, and that local artists are able to produce their own material for what is now a global distribution. Um, so fingers crossed for that. Um, and so I look forward to um, seeing you all again on the 40th anniversary.